You did a roll call. Do you want to call the meeting to order? I hereby call the March 10, 2014 meeting of the Civic Center Advisory Committee to order. Please we have a roll call. CCAC members does start? Here. Fisher? Here. Ta? Here. Lively? Here. Meredith? Here. Tonelli? Here. David? Here. Councilmember Liaison Stagolia? Here. Lewis? She'll probably be here. She would. Okay, should we uh, open up public comments? Do you have any comments from the public? No comments? Okay. We don't have any. See none. We will move on to our, we will close public comments. We'll proceed to the approval of the minutes, which is within the email you got, and it is in this packet with this paper clip on it. And I believe it's the second page of that packet. Is that right? Yeah, in the agenda they typed in the minutes. It's like that. Do you have any comments on the minutes? If no comments, I'll move to the acceptance. Any second? Okay, so you can record all the way. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Can that pass? Thank you. And we'll move on to review of staff report to City Council. Okay. Um, I, at the committee's direction, um, I have a draft of the staff report that, at your last meeting, you may remember, it was a staff report to you, the committee, bringing in all the background, um, and there was some discussion on it as to how best to communicate that to City Council. You made some several suggestions, which I hopefully incorporated. Subsequent to that, uh, the chair uh, had selected a ad hoc committee uh, to to work on this process, and there were some comments and interchange that uh, occurred last week and even over the weekend. So what I have done um, is incorporate or not incorporated that rather. I have printed those out, and it's the first page. Uh, of the staff report, essentially, with some suggestions. And I believe, Steve, the only changes that the subcommittee suggested were really in the recommendations or the actions. Correct. Uh, with, um, and and I, I do have to point out, because I made a mistake, I have to single out Mr. Meridu, who came in last week and spent quite a bit of time educating me. And he made one suggestion on a change, which I said, great idea. I made it, and then I sent out the wrong version to you originally. So I, I have to publicly apologize and thank him for his insights, more of which will be coming to you in April uh, in terms of, uh, and, and thereafter in terms of project management. But anyway, so I thought it might be useful because this is kind of, this is staff's report to city council. However, because of the collective wisdom here, um, I certainly want to make sure that we capture your thoughts as to how best to communicate to the city council the issues that we're trying to bring to their attention. So um, you'll see some parenthetical comments in here. Um, and, you want me to take it from that word? Okay. And I'd be happy to have you do that. Last time, George really beautifully articulated what it means to authorize the city manager to begin preparations for the now change to design phase of the project. It was really clear, concise, and it made total sense. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping <laughs> you have a good memory or you're really smart and creative to get it up again. To, can you remind us what that was? Because that may be exactly what we need. Just so it's not ambiguous what we're getting an approval from council. Well, the, the way that uh, the four recommendations were modified in the staff report and presented, they were, they were cut short. And the, the actual changes to what the committee is going to do and I have to apologize here. I think you got an email late this afternoon with that I thought I had put that into the revision report that I chatted about last week, but I hadn't. And that's the actual changes to your charter. Uh, from okay. the staff's first take at those recommended changes. And that basically says, you know, the committee's going to continue to work with the master plan as long as it's still going on. So that would uh, that would impact number four here. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah, it would impact number three and number four to some degree. Uh, it says, you know, work with staff to finalize the master plan if that's still ongoing. Uh, and then also, number 
there are item F, G, and H that are added to your charter here. F is assist staff as appropriate in the review and recommendation of project professionals to include but not limited to environmental consultants, design professionals, project management professionals, and the project contractors. Uh, the next one is once the Civic Center project is actually underway, CCAC continues to work with staff as appropriate to provide, provide feedback on project priorities and direction. And then H is assist staff and the city council with the identification and development of donor recognition opportunities throughout the project. The one thing, George, that uh, I'm sure didn't mean to admit, it's just uh, uh, we're moving from uh, we're moving into a phase where, as when we go out to raise money, people are going to look to this committee and say, you know, and they know me, they're going to say, are you sure it's going to come out? Are you sure the project's going to be nice? Are you sure we're going to make our budget? Mm -hmm. And so um, we're, there's going to be some goodwill that the folks here are going to expand on their own. And I think the one thing we, I think we want to add here, we, we just saw this today, so we may have more comments next time, but the one, or we can today, is that if there was a change, like when construction starts, if there's a change in design, somebody says, you know, we're going to double the size of the city hall, the, the, uh, the building, where you, the, where you, this, this thing, uh, this kind of a room. Or now we have, you know, this group is going to want to be involved in design approval, or at least recommendation to council of design and cost changes. Um, if, hey, you know, let's go raise 22 million instead of 20, this group is going to want some, to have an ability to have feedback on that in a formal way. Just because we're we've spent years and people are going to rely on our opinion, I think we're not going to want to just say go finish it and let us know when the ribbon cutting is and we'll show up. I think that's that's it's not that we're going to want to run construction or manage a project manager or do those things that you guys are going to want to do. Just if there are changes from what got approved at the end, in budget or design, we're going to want to have it come back to us in some way. Um, let me let me ask Steve. Because I think George may have captured that in mm -hmm. G, which is once the Civic Center project, and I presume when it says underway, yeah. I mean that, that could be both acceptance of the master plan and into design. The CCAC will continue yeah. to work with staff as appropriate to provide feedback on project priorities and direction. Maybe we could just clarify, for example, a, mater a material change in design or budget. You're not going to come back to us because there's an L, there's a there's a we were just talking about there's a, you have to do LED lighting right. instead of fluorescent. Yeah. I mean, in fact, as you know, it would be you're not come back for that. It'd be adverse to the to the project to have to come back with change orders because we don't want the contractor to be accruing no. um, you know liquidated damages okay. because but a real a change in design. But it, I think you you use the term material change with that term being used as the term in legal term, not in the construction profession. We're going to go from open yeah. space to all progress. You know, that has two material impact. Design is a big change, and there's a big budget change. Well, here's the, the challenge. Uh, and and I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just suggesting a, a path. You know, we get this major project, and there's a material change that comes before the project committee. If there's a liaison, which is I think I mentioned in that email yeah. that I, I would encourage a liaison who has got some construction engineering or some type of project background sits in on those project meetings. So you, you'll be able to see those things coming and pull them out as they occur, bring them to the next regular meeting of the CCDC yes. and talk about them as they're ongoing before it even hits the city council or whatever budget process the town has to approve that change order. Yeah, that makes, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. So you're in the, on the advanced side of that, rather than saying, okay, there's this material change order, let's stop everything on no, it. No, no, yeah. Bring it to the CCAC to talk about it. Then it's got to go to the city council for approval, and then we can actually do it. So I don't want to encumber that it, process. And, and you would have leeway. It wouldn't be the budget is exactly the dollar amount that's approved. Yeah. There's going to be plus the $500,000 contingency, or plus a million, whatever, $3 million. You know, to, you've got a lot of contingency. There's right. a lot there. Well, it would be much smaller when the project's awarded. Yeah. As appropriate. But council will give you design. some. You'll have some of the contractor, right. and then you'll have some with council that will be bigger. Right. Right? It'll be the contractor's contingency plus. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically, all of it is under control of the city. When the city lets a contract, we do not let it for the bid amount plus 2%. We let it for the bid the contingency is owned by the city until we, we authorize
price until the contract. But oh, because okay. they don't have a line item price. They have a gross price. Right. That includes some contingency. Well, it includes whatever contingency they have within their bid. No, I get it. But they bid the price. They're not. They're not. They're not separating it's out their bid. No. Well, they're suspended ours. Right. Yeah, but, but there's a little difference where. Um, I, I get it. I get it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Part of the issue that uh, the Jewish would have is that we've got um, we meet once a month. And decisions on a construction project like this need to be made on a daily and basis, maybe a hourly basis. Right. You can't wait for a it. big design change is sure. going to be weeks. Yes, I, I, I would agree because we, we're going to reach because they're going to start designing it and doing some temporary. They're going to do some costing. Yeah. They're going to, I think something. Let, let's say which is why the liaison would be important right. as part of it. And and I, I agree with you because any significant change like that, the liaison would then have. Presumably, time to come back to the CCAC, and if you know, if time were of the essence on that change, we'd probably say to the liaison and to the chair, "Would you please call, you know, work with yeah. the, let's call a special meeting because we can't wait to give direction to the architect right. to come up with the drawings to then no, no, go to the contract right, right. and get the price." But it's material. It's not right. We understand material change, something significant, yeah. not you know. The doors went from 36 to 38 inches. Right. Away. Yeah, we're, we're, we're adding a whole, adding another set of doors because of code requirements. It's not even no, that. That's not it. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. And you know, I think okay. we, but that would be, that. I think it would be great to somehow, the liaison's one way to do it, somehow call out that some of the words you're comfortable with that okay. if there's really a change in the design of the project, so you're going to go from two stories to one story. You know, you're going to go from. Is there a dollar amount? You should come back with what you think really think of something. Um, well, I would be hesitant to put yes, that in the chart. Right. Yeah. More than 1% or 2% or more than the contingency or more than, there's some number which you're going to come back and just say, because we're out raising, you know, some of us are going to be out raising money with a different hat on, wanting to say this is not a runaway project. Okay, so can I ask a, a question that's a little bit off this, but it actually, I don't think is. Um, when we talk about changes, if we are wildly successful in under a year, which I think is, going to be part of timing. Um, material changes may happen while we're in design phase. And then if we raise more than 20 and somebody says, oh, here's 12 million more, dig a basement, uh, then we're going to go, but that's going to slow the project down because we're going to have to go back through design changes, but it'll still all be on paper. Um, until, until the council authorizes the issuance of the request for bids. It's okay. within the purview of the, of the town to make that change. Once the bids are issued, and with any addenda that come out with that, and the contractor submits their bid, anything after that has to be approved within the council approved contingency amount. So what is the timing, do we, what is our timing for putting bids out? Um, we're looking, well, the, the, the schedule, and it's very tentative at this point, the schedule would be probably, as, as we are currently uh, proposing, is to go out for construction beginning about July of 2015. Do we want to have any more discussion on, the on, on number four, what this committee would be authorized to do? <coughs> well, um, is that the language that's on That's what George item told. one. Yeah. So the, there, there's there's one change in the last paragraph, which is it says that the committee consists of seven members, including two liaisons. Yeah, a plus two liaisons. Yeah. 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 Plus two. Liaisons. Okay. You know, as we go into design, I, I'm kind of stepping. I want to take a step at a time. Go into design. We as a group. Um, solicit bid, uh, architectural bids into the design, the same as we did before as a group. Um, once they start into design, how often, what, 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 is, what are the parameters um, do you see that we would be engaged with this architectural mm -hmm. group that we uh, What I would propose is at least at the, you know, the, the, the kind of traditional 35%, 65%, 90% having those sets of plans prepared and, and bringing them to the CCAC for review. Now, if there, was a, you know, if there was a subcommittee that met more often and wanted to look at things, you know, some, you know, maybe a piece of that in between, I don't have a problem with that either. I mean, I would, 
I, you know, I would expect I'd be you know, work meeting with the design team you know, once a month, and it's probably going to be a six to eight month process for design. Okay, so, so I guess what I'm asking is, you know, first of all, are we going to put the library out to bid with the rest of the building project? You know, are we trying to separate that from? And that's, and that's a good question, but I, and I think okay. so far the, you may remember that the cost estimate was prepared. One of the assumptions in that is that we're not phasing the project explicitly. I mean, if the contractor chooses to you know, stagger things a little bit, but the idea would be that they'd be doing the buildings all at the same time, and then probably doing the demolition and then finishing up the site work. Okay, so from before a fundraising we get construction, though, we're talking about design. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we get construction, so, right. yeah, but we're talking about, first of all, we're talking about design. So are we going to let the library contract out uh, separately than the, um, the rest of the project, or is it going to be one firm doing right. the entire project? I mean, I suppose, that, I mean, that's obviously the council's decision, but I would recommend it be one firm. Okay. Because so, there's economies of scale there. Right, right, there are. Okay, so, so given that, so as we hire them, you know, we, we still need to go through the square footages and all the programming mm -hmm. issues. Are you saying that we're going to be divided into subcommittees to do this, or we're going to be just meeting once a month with the architects to do this? Oh, I, I was talking more in the design. I, you know, I think you, you indicated much, you know, this is my, my idea, and, you know, it's open for discussion, but. Uh, much like with the selection of the architects for the master plan, the committee would be involved as a committee of the whole in the selection, in the winnowing down of the proposals, and then in the interviewing of the finalists and the selection of the design architect, as well as selection of a project manager, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, one of the concepts is that, and I, I, we'd have to make this recommendation to council, but I, you know, would be that we only go up through preliminary design at this point because uh, we have not, you know, we had, we have a cost estimate, but it's, I think as you all see, it's very theoretical. It's it's based on no design. Right. The committee has said that they want to reserve the option of reviewing that cost estimate in conjunction with the 35% design, which would also be an opportunity to look at the program and say, yes, we want. You know, we want the library, and now we're comfortable at you know 8,700 square feet. But the, the administration building and police would want to be 23,000 instead of 20,000. So I think, I think, therefore, we probably would only award the contract to the architect and negotiate a fee up through preliminary design. Once that was completed, and the committee vetted that, then we go forward and say, all right, now finish your proposal for final design. Does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, you know, I'm just trying to figure out how often, you know, what, what our interface with the architects will be at, once they're chosen. Um, how do we give them information, you know, defining the square footage? Is it by subcommittee? Is it that we're out of the picture? Is it as a group in, entirely? Um, you know, we, we've got to revisit the, you know, the police, the, how we have a library, everything. We've got to revisit everything. Very much. So how is that going to be executed? I think that's up to the committee to do that, but what George is proposing very clearly has the committee involved in the design process. Okay. And, and, um, Gordon, it's not entirely clear. Sorry, Elizabeth, go ahead. No, I think that's, a, I think that's our, our approach, that the committee is involved in the design um, phase, in the design discussion, all through the design phase, so that there's checks and balances and we can, you know, it's not just um, a, a select group of, you know, an ad hoc committee or just by staff. So that's. May I just make an observation? I think we're getting in the weeds a little bit in this discussion. Well, we have to approve this. This is going to council next week. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, I should have known. But I think that how we split up and what work is done by whom is something that first we need to get a proposal to the council. And I, I think there's one thing missing, but I'll come back to that in a minute, that is a, a little bit more ambiguous because I think the council may say, okay, we want them to continue on as, as this, some of this wording is said, and you know, go for it. We'll come back and then figure out how to get that work done. Um, yeah, but here, here's, 
I, I think within the last six months we've had a discussion about what staff doing, what are we doing, and there was some we maybe some not entire alignment of this. When I, when I saw on what that. George has suggested yeah. here, I think the light bulbs have all gone out and we're all in the same. Well, let me just because there to me there are three things that are missing. Uh, and a quick read because we just got it and it's not the biggest font in the world and uh, <coughs> my progressive ones are good for nothing. Um, in, in letter E. It doesn't make it, this says we're going to work with staff to coordinate public outreach, collect residents, what during the design phase of the community. It does say anything about, and we will somehow report to council with staff. Because that's been a discussion before. Section E is, is, is what our current charter is. And we're talking about updating it. Yeah, and so. And, but the question is, are we working with, so do we, just like now, where we're working with Gordon and George on a memo that's going from staff, but we're just helping facilitate the memo. Is that? The understanding that we're a part of that, so that's it's just not absolutely. That's why I've been sending everything out in draft well, form. I, I, that's great. I would expect that George is going to make the staff report and say, on behalf of the CCAC yeah, yeah. or the work of the, something that will reflect that we have been involved with you guys. Yeah, I'm just saying maybe Larry, you could. What, what you're currently doing right now, yeah, isn't a part of the current charter. Well, you're asking because us what charter, you're asking for feedback on what we think it should be. I, I agree. Well, what, what, are we doing? what I'm trying to say is though, what you're currently doing now, reviewing this memo, isn't written into the charter. It's an assumption that the CCAC is intimately involved in the process. So I don't okay. necessarily believe that fine tuning it to that level of granularity is needed. Okay. Well, then the two that that maybe should be called out is it isn't clear the question that Rose was asking about design. I don't see it here. I don't see, you know, Spanish style versus modern versus prairie style versus whatever. I don't see us having any input here. It just says we're going to collect opinions. Maybe that's a part of that. We're going to collect opinions from the public. And the other one is the square footage review, which is very clearly called out in here. So maybe we don't need it. Maybe you're just telling me don't worry, but you're I think that if we're really saying that the project, the CCAC will be uh, um, part of the design process, that it should say that in there. E is about as close as it comes to that. But E it is, says it will coordinate with public charter. outreach and collect resident mm -hmm. input during the divide, the sign phase of the project. I'm, I'm, so, let me see if I understand. George. E is currently their chart. Yeah. 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 I mean, if if it let me suggest you if, make that if, stronger? The, if, the, if the phrase to coordinate public outreach and collect resident input were stricken, so that because <clears throat> now it may seem to be limited, right. does that then say and the work with staff during the design phase of the project? That's all right. That's yeah. good. That, how does that does that work for you? You hit it on the head. Okay. Because okay. yeah, I, I, I don't think we're going to do it on public outreach. Don't cut out the uh, in, input from the public because I would expect that you'll we'll have a input with designs similar to maybe the master plan and get public feedback. Or we're all going to be shot on site if they don't like <laughs> it. Absolutely like necessary. So, well, you could say during the, the the public feedback and design phase of the project. Uh, here's my suggestion, and if I may put a comma, and we're really getting down to the granular, yeah. but you put a comma after the word staff, comma, and then put the word including, including to coordinate public outreach and collect resident yeah. input, comma, during the design phase sure. of the community. Yeah, we, we all get it. We're on the record. So, and I think as, as we have been acting all through, sending material out in draft form to the committee, because that's, that's the input we want. Okay. No, that's great. Uh, any other, do we have more comments on number four? I, I have a comment on number three. Okay, are we ready for three? Oh, We're going to move. Is everybody okay with number four? I didn't know we skipped three. Uh, well, George, when George went to four because he had the hand up. So, okay. back. Only, so my only question is, if I were in the city council, I would see this, and you have an environmental phase, and you have a design, beginning design phase. What's it going to cost us? And where is the money coming? Um, and isn't that going to be part of this proposal or the suggestion from staff report from you to the council? It, it is. It, it's going to cost the cost estimates part of that report, and the twenty million dollar fundraising target is part of the report. And at this point, that's all the council needs. So if they approve this, what what are the steps you can do until you go back to them? 
That, I think that's what we're trying to understand. We can begin the environmental process, which means we'll have the planning staff start to work on RFPs to engage yeah. environmental consultants and start down that road. We can start work on developing the RFP for the, the design phase of the project. And CCAC will be involved in the creation of that RFP before it even gets to the city council for approval. Okay. And that's it. And Clive, Clive raised a really big question, which is, is the design, because I think historically we've thought of the design phase of the project as being an architect, which it will certainly have. But is it more? Is it a project manager? Is it a cost estimator? Is it, who, who's, who is part of the design phase? And, and do you go back to council when you have a budget? Are we putting out multiple RFPs? Are we putting out all RFPs for cost estimators, project managers? Like, what does that include? Are we ready to say that? Do we know or not? That's that was the that well, was the way we're going to get before we go back to council. Yeah, as we develop the RFP, we can talk about cost estimation. We can talk about project management team. But the project management team could be part of the design phase. It could be part of the construction phase. We may want two. We may want one consultant firm is going to do both. We don't know yet. So as we develop the RFP to do that, of which this committee is going to have input, that's going to end up going to city council for approval. Does it? So it goes back. To, so if you. Okay, so your point is you go back to council with the RFP for whoever you're going to go out for. Well, council yeah. has to approve the request for proposal themselves. Okay, so that go goes out. back to council no matter what. Correct. So this group, staff, and CCAC will discuss. Is that is that is it just the architect or is these other parties also? Okay. And I think it depends upon. Yeah, I have a question. A follow up question. Okay. No, I, I would just say that it depends upon you know what architects you know. Uh, respond to the RFP whether or not they have the bandwidth to do, you know, multiple tasks, you know, project management or uh, design, as well as just drawing and building. Well, you don't want them doing the project management. Um, let, me, let me back up a little bit. The really good news mm -hmm. is that we're in the phase of the project where the, the nitty gritty becomes really, really important. You know, we're at that phase where you're, you're going to start putting a team together very quickly within, you know, as fast as council can react to what staff says. Um, but it will be a team, it won't just be an architect. If you're, this is a 20, you know, this is a $38 million project, mm -hmm. you want to get done within 24 to 36 months. Mm -hmm. It's, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, George and Gordon are gonna be talking about who's the third party PM, and how do we know <laughs> when the architect's at schematic, and we can't get a contractor bid, because they, city didn't work that way. City can only go for hard bid. So how, how do we know if it meets the 38, you know, down to 20 net project goal? You can't rely on the architect. That's not what they do. And you can't rely on the architect's estimator. Because that, it's just, it's a conflict. It's a horrible conflict. So it's, you're going to, this gets into the it's going to scale question. up very quickly. Right. It's going to be the project management. Yeah. yeah. So then, so the question becomes, at what point do you bring the project manager on? Mm -hmm. And this was the discussion that Gordon and I had. And you can certainly wait until the construction phase, but I think at that point you're relying on the design team to guess how much the construction is going to be. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's probably not what we want to do. Maybe it would have been okay if we had an unlimited budget, but we don't. This is a budget-driven project, and it's very important that the design follows the cost that we have, not vice versa. So that means that you need to have really a, a project manager. Um, intimately involved with the design team from the very beginning. And one of the things that I would suggest is that, I'm not saying we should do this, I would, but I would suggest that we consider it, is that the project manager is retained even before the members of the design team are retained. Mm -hmm. So that way you've got um, the construction, the uh, design contracts are being formulated by someone that's seeing the big picture, that understands the role of the different members of the design team, it's not just architects, there are going to be multiple engineering professions that are involved in this. Um, how do we know what's an appropriate fee in this particular market? We don't really know, we don't do enough of these projects. A project manager coming in at a very early phase is aware of those things. There's contract issues that need to be resolved. For instance, if we get to the 35% phase and the cost estimates come in higher than we're expecting. Who pays for the redesign? Uh, we are, we are assume that. We don't understand that. We don't have to redesign. So those things need to be thought out even before.
before we start negotiating contracts with the design team. So I would suggest that at least this committee <coughs> maybe interview some project management firms. Uh, we have and decide a, what we want to do. Let me. Uh, uh, item number seven on the agenda is form, formation of other ad hoc committees. Okay. Well, so what I'd suggest we might want to hold that until we get there, but you, you've got a foreshadowing that if we really are going into production mode, I'm, the thinking is going to get very concrete about what's our goal now. What I'd suggest the committee do then is have the council authorize the design process. The way you're articulating it, project management is a part of that design process. So as staff works on the RFP for design with the committee, that becomes a recommendation as we craft two RFPs to go back to the city council, one for project management, one for design, and process them accordingly. But that's that's all committee work. It doesn't necessarily have to be articulated with the no, members to the council because they're big picture stuff. Yeah. Okay. I really don't want to have to pay for the design phase twice. So no, I agree. So I'm I'm, I'm what I'm telling you, so this this markup came from the there's a subcommittee that whatever the heck we would call it. But uh, I don't even know what we're called. We, we had a new name that's not on here, but it's like the, the budget so. council memo committee. And um, whatever that's called. <laughs> and I, so I think if we look at our comments, number three can be stricken. We don't need it. It's very clear. You very clearly articulated, we're in session, I get it, that the design phase will come up with our piece that will go to council. With, with the one caveat that the, the word design has replaced our piece. Yeah, and it, then it's very clear, right? And number four is you've come up with language here. I think we're we're good with it. With the you know this is the addendum to this. And, and, and we'll, right. we'll include. I'll make sure it includes that little with with yeah. a with as as seen on exhibit two or whatever. Yeah. It is. Um, you just struck architectural in the word is design instead of architectural. Yeah, so it's broader. So yeah, exactly to Clive's point and George's point, it really encompasses a broader definition. Okay. And then um, number five, I think, is irrelevant. Number five. Number five. Uh, number five down here. It, it actually looks like five point five. It must have. Oh, yeah, I hit it twice. Where? Just on the markup. I've got three different page. It's irrelevant. Yeah. It's irrelevant. Yeah. 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 Right. We'll do that. We're doing your. It's gone. Okay. Just so ignore it. Really so your memo is fine. The original memo with the one word change. And then this this comment to Dee Dee goes away. She said it's fine. I I couldn't remember if I know council can't have an opinion about fundraising. I didn't know if we could. And Dee Dee says no, we're allowed to. So that's fine. Good. Yeah, so I, the, the subcommittee then is fine with the memo as written, with that one change you mentioned there. So then we can say, does anybody else on the rest of the CCAC have any other comments before we vote on this thing? Or discussion, any further discussion? We're voting on the recommendations of staff. The staff's memo. Right. Eliminating our comments. Right. With this exhibit that George gave us with the small microscopic change that goes wrong. So it makes us feel better. George, I think it does it. Could I ask you to see uh, tonight that when you visit tomorrow when I'm visiting the attorney, your report on fundraising? That the city attorney's preparing? I guess you should, that maybe I'll ask him for it. You might ask him about it, but I don't think he's done with it yet. In terms of who can participate and how they can participate. Well, I think that's all he's going to participate. I mean, we've got people who are not in this room. Yeah, so it'll look like this one. Okay. There are no problems. I, I, I think he meant. They just handed that. What, what I'm articulating is who on the council can participate. Right. If a member of the council can participate, a member of the committee can participate, we don't need them. We took them out. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 We're waiting on it with baby. That's not it. We don't know. We're waiting on it. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to talk to you. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so one thing. Any, any further, you any further discussion? Yes. Because I don't want anything said that may not be doable. So I think we, right. we have to be on the same page on this. Okay, so the memo says that the fundraising target is 19.8 million. I thought at the meeting two weeks ago that the 20. committee decided to have a range of 20 to 25 million. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if we can justify, I'm thinking about this, can, we just, can, can that be justified to the council? I think a range is fine. Well, what we didn't say was that we could try to raise additional funds for some of the other uh, well, items, like the restoration of this building. That's the one thing that didn't get mentioned. This building might, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to this building. Yeah, but we didn't talk about the... The, the stocking stuff. No, but this is the minimum. This, the, the, this minimum. is the minimum target. We could say and, that. And 
personally, I'd rather see a range come to us because I think it's far more realistic than a 19.8 million number, and I think that's what the committee discussed two weeks ago. That's correct. George, how do you feel about that? Uh, the range is fine, but technically the council's not even approving the fundraising target. They're just looking at the cost estimates of the building. It's the first time it's going into writing ever in the right. history of this community. So that's where it's important. And it's yeah. going to get picked up. Right. And, and, it's it's up. Yeah. and it's going to get picked up at the council. So how do you feel about it? Okay. So why don't we say, so do we want to, how do people, do we want to say 20 to 25 million? Okay, and then, is, is, that, that, a, is that a yes? That's, yes. A, yeah. that's okay. in that first sentence of that right. paragraph. Correct. Because then the rest of the chart and the analysis just speaks for itself. <clears throat> Except that I have, to, I have to change or delete kind of a portion of the last thing. I change it so, so it's I, target I would get rid of the word target here because mm -hmm. it's confusing. Which is the target? And I would just say a fundraising need. Because the target can be bigger than the yeah. 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 Following the, the council's, and I don't want to presume their approval, following the council's consideration of this staff report, at the following meeting, two things will happen. The council will get the resolution of commissions and committees to amend the charter. That'll end up on their consent agenda to process that modification. And Gordon will prepare a staff report to articulate the changes that are needed in the the funding of the project to make sure allocations are proper as we move forward yeah. through design, through environmental, through everything, for the library, for the building component, and for the, fund the fundraising component or public funds part of the project. And per DV's question, anywhere in here, or somebody's question, I think it was do you have to talk about money? Like, uh, it's going to cost us $50,000 to do yes, this. Yes, I asked that. I, I, as a council member, I think I asked that. We should talk about that, I yeah. think. I, it's well, staff, right. We don't have any of this. This is the not, issue of funding the, you might the, the preliminary costs. Right. Well, that'll come back to the, that's, the, that's what's coming in April. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we we the the to, to, to do the RFP, will it cost you a bunch of money? Actually, if, if I can, um, the cost estimate actually has line items for, the, for those various elements. That's true, it does. Uh, including, you know, and I talked to Lisa just last week. We have an estimate of 200,000, or a budget rather, 